Hey, welcome back to Carp Lounge Tackle. Today we have another tutorial video for your RT7 to help you get the right decisions made when you're buying it and when you're on the bank, how to use it. Because let's face it, it is some piece of kit and it does take a little bit of a learning curve to get the best out of it. But let's start with motors. When you go onto the website to order your boat, there's loads of drop down boxes that will be looking for you to tick so you can either bump up things or add things or, and it all can be a little bit overwhelming, a little bit confusing. And to be honest with you, sometimes you need a bit of help. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a kind of my history with the RT range, because I've been with the RT range since it was the most basic of boats with nothing to it. My first boat was the RT4 with the, a Tolson Echo Sounder. When I bought that, I was given a choice of motors and the more expensive one were the high speed motors. And I thought, if it's more expensive, it's got to be better. So I went with that, but that was a bit of a mistake because what I didn't understand was why I would want high speed motors. You know, so high speed are the brushless motors, brushed the quiet motors. And the brushless motors of the time were really, really noisy. They were designed for fishing huge, big, deep pits and lakes over in Europe, big sweeping rivers that had lots of tow and lots of flow. The, the motors were, were for if you needed to give it a bit of a push and have a bit more grunt to get through those big waves and big tows that these waters would provide. And I'm fishing real small little lakes that really, you know, you don't need that kind of boat. And the problem is with the older technology back in the day, the, the motors were really high pitched whining and they were really noisy and you could hear them from, you know, swims down as it took off off the lake. And I was just totally overgunned. It was the wrong motors. And at the time there was the standard motors and the low noise motors, and then obviously these brushless high speed motors. So once I moved up, to the next boat, the RT4 V3, I decided I'd go for low noise motors and they were night and day, super quiet, did the job, really just, and they were very, very fast as well. I, I just got the job done. So I was really happy with that. And then I moved over to the RT4 V4 with low noise motors, but the later iteration. And what I'm gonna say is with Carp Lounge, everything has been evolution and revolution. And their evolution is that each iteration of motors, they're designing new things, they're getting new dampening systems to make them even quieter in the boats. The RT7 design is, is again done to make it a little bit quieter. And they've just got better and better and better. When I had the RT4 V4, as I said, it was super quiet, would motor along at a lovely pace, but you couldn't hear it. It was whisper quiet. And I was so impressed until I saw the RT7, which had low noise motors fitted in it. And I was just blown away at how quieter, again, they'd managed to get the low noise motors. So when it came to the time for me to order my RT7, I was a little bit sort of, okay, low noise is the way I'm gonna go. I'd made up my mind until I sort of had a conversation with Danny in Carp Lounge. And he said, Jer, you need to try the digital motors. These are the new, digital censored, ultra low noise, high powered motors. They're incredible, he said, and they'll give you the best of everything. You'll be able to go at high speed with not much noise, and then down to sort of ultra low quiet, low noise, even quieter than the low noise in the RT7 that I'd already seen. So I ordered the RT7 with these brushless motors, these new high power digital motors, and they were a different cheese altogether. Absolutely incredible. What I've done is I've done a side by side comparison of two RT7s, identical in most ways except for one is fitted with the low noise motors. It's my mate Rob's boat. And I also have my boat next to it with the new brand new digital high power motors.
So it makes for interesting viewing when you see them side by side. This was all filmed on a GoPro camera, which was attached on the same clamp on both boats in the same spot. So it's given as fair as a representation as I can give you. When you use the new digital motors, you have a choice. You don't have to run it at 100%. And I found if you crank it around 40% of power, it will run at the same speed as the low noise motors in the normal standard RT7, but even quieter. If I need to, I can crank it up, up to 100%. If I'm using my autopilot system, whether or I want to set it in the touchpad section, I can just turn it up to the speed I want and leave it at that. If you are a person who fishes waters that are pretty much 99% of your staple, they're smaller, more intimate waters and shallow, the low noise motors are gonna serve you perfectly. They're gonna be absolutely fantastic. If you're a visitor of France on a regular basis or other European countries for a bit of carp fishing, having the ability to crank up the speed at a flick of a switch or a thumb across a slider will give you an opportunity to really get the best out of your RT7. At the 40% setting, it will run at the same speed as the low noise motor on the RT7. If I crank it all the way up, it makes it 25% faster, but that's not all. It also has loads of torque a lot more torque in it than the standard low noise motors. And if you're fishing at range, or even <laughs> you don't have to be at range for, to do this, but if you're fishing at range and you've got a big bow in your line and you need to tighten that up while you're going out with the boat, put your finger on the spool, let the boat tighten it up, and with that extra bit of torque, it'll pull that bowstring tight so that you can sink it the right way. The ability to get your boat out safely on big venues and big rivers and get it back to where you started from is a godsend. So I'm gonna also state this, the low noise motors as they stand will do all of that, except for, you know, it won't have the extra torque, but it will get the bait out at long range and will bring back the boat, no problem. It's just gonna be a lot slower than the digital motors. Sometimes, you know, having to get boats out in between rain showers or small windows or feeding times, you need to get that out there. And don't forget, as the boat is going into the spot, whether it's at low noise or at high speed, it slows down automatically about one and a half meters out from the spot and goes into like a silent mode very stealthily and then drops the bait. And then when you bring it back out, I always do it manually. I bring it back towards me slightly and then re-engage the home point for it to come back automatically on the autopilot. And as I said, it's just absolutely perfect. To me, it is the holy grail of motors for the RT7. And uh, the digital motors for me are the way forward. Uh, and I've no doubt the company will move that along over the next couple of years as well. If you're using normally 10 amp batteries in your boat, that's not gonna be enough juice if you're running at a high speed. What you'll need to do is bump up to the 15 amp batteries. And to be honest with you, that's what I just use in my boat now is I just stick the 15 amps in. So this is Jerry, this is Carp Lounge Tackle. And I hope I've helped you think about your motor choice and kind of given you an idea of what way you should go with that. And we'll see you in the next video.